All right there, everyone. The fake news outlets CNN and MSNBC have lost over a fifth of their audience, all the while conservative news outlets are absolutely surging. That's what we're talking about on today's video. That's right. We're going to look at not only the contrasting fortunes of liberal versus conservative news media, we're also going to see what those contrasting fortunes mean for the rise of a new conservative age. But first, as you know, we on this channel are huge advocates of voting our values with our wallets. We often talk about supporting businesses that support our values. But there's another way to vote your values with your dollars, and that's with your investment dollars. And that is where our good friends, American Values Investments, comes in. American Values Investments is specifically designed to give investors the opportunity to own stocks of companies that they believe best reflect our fundamental conservative values. Now, it's, it's not just about avoiding objectionable companies. It's about targeting positively companies that best reflect the traditional values that have made America good and therefore great. And of course, there's plenty of risk in the stock market, and our ad does not constitute an endorsement. But if you want to learn more about their patriotic investment strategies, then check them out at AmericanValues.com or just click on the link below. All right, the weekly basic cable rankings are in, and the fall of CNN and MSNBC could not be more dramatic. Both CNN and MSNBC have lost over a fifth of their audience. CNN lost 21% of their already minuscule audience, while MSNBC lost nearly 25%, a quarter of their viewers. This is, look, this is their viewers overall. In terms of primetime viewership, MSNBC lost 15% of their primetime audience. CNN lost 16%. The good news for MSNBC is that they're still able to pull off uh, just over a million viewers during their primetime shows. Uh, CNN, uh, not so much. Uh, they can't even, I, you know, I can't even recall the last time CNN has actually broke the million threshold. Their primetime viewership remains in the hundreds of thousands, which is another way of saying that we YouTubers with our little office setup and webcams, uh, can get more viewers than the multi-million dollar corporation like CNN. Even CNN's ridiculous seven-hour town hall focusing on the environment a few days back. Did you see that? Uh, we have clips now of audience members actually falling asleep during that freaking seven-hour infomercial for radical environmentalist Democrats. Even then, they couldn't bring in a major audience. As it turns out, it was a total ratings bust. But don't worry. CNN is promising to have another town hall focusing on... LGBT issues. <laughs> I mean, this is CNN, the most trusted name in news. The simple fact is that these ratings implosions are just par for the course for these ultra-liberal cable outlets. Uh, CNN's numbers for Q2 of this year were some of their worst ever. They fell to just over a half million viewers total, okay? They struggled even uh, more during the all-important primetime hours of 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern time. They finished an embarrassing 15th place in terms of the most watched networks on basic cable, so they fell behind such channels like TLC, Discovery, Hallmark Channel. They averaged just over 700,000 primetime viewers in Q2. So it was no surprise when CNN started off Q3 with the lowest viewership average for the network since 2015. And given how news heavy the second quarter was, with the release of the Mueller report, the beginning of the whole Democratic presidential campaign fiasco, Q3 is promised to be a ratings disaster. And with these latest numbers that are coming in, it's confirming that rather dire prognosis. Now, while it is true that cable viewership as a whole has declined, streaming services like YouTube and Hulu are the way of the future. That's why we're here, right? So while it's true that cable viewership in general has been shrinking, many are noticing that CNN's losses really are nothing short of overwhelming. The network lost 18% of its audience compared to the second quarter of last year. And CNN has also lost nearly 40% of primetime viewers among their key demographics. So there's no question, no question, CNN's ratings are collapsing. And MSNBC isn't faring much better. We talked about the collapse of Rachel, Rachel Maddow. 
Remember back in March, uh, which was the end of Q1 for this year, Maddow was actually topping Sean Hannity on Fox, right, with the coveted 25 to 54-year-old demographic, which is uh, quite an achievement in that sense. At least in terms of that demographic, Maddow was the queen of the 9 o'clock hour. She was beating Hannity. She was really on top of the cable news media, as it were, just literally just a few months back. But then the Mueller report came out. <laughs> I mean, this was the report that Maddow was, was promising her audience would finally overturn the Trump presidency, right? Once Bumbling Bob released his report that found absolutely no hint of collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign on the one hand and no obstruction of justice on the other, after Bumbling Bob's report was released, Maddow's program imploded. She lost nearly five. 100,000 viewers. You heard that right. She lost a half a million viewers for her first episode following the release of the report. A half million of her viewers turned her off after Bumbling Bob ruined her nightly anti-Trump rants. Then, according to a report by TV Newser, she plummeted 13% in April compared to the same month in 2018. She's fallen from first place all the way down to fifth. She's trailing all four of Fox News' evening shows in terms of total viewers. Which brings me now to the other side of that equation we've been talking about. All the while CNN and MSNBC have been losing a fifth of their audience, conservative media is absolutely surging. It's actually nothing short of amazing. Conservative media is surging in virtually every media outlet, television, talk radio, websites, podcasts, virtually every media outlet is seeing dominance in right-wing news organizations. In terms of cable news, Fox News continues to dominate every single metric in cable news. In terms of their ratings last week when CNN and MSNBC were losing a fifth of their audience, not only was Fox News number one for the 34th straight week, averaging over 1.32 million viewers a day, but as the fake news outlets were hemorrhaging viewers, Fox News grew their viewership by 6%. Do you think these people are getting red-pilled? <laughs> you think people are defecting from CNN over to Fox? Be interesting, huh? In terms of their website, they've seen dramatic and frankly astonishing uh, traffic growth. Foxnews.com is dominating news coverage in terms of web traffic. What's astonishing here is that foxnews.com has actually doubled their traffic since 2015. They're now at more than 100 million unique visitors per month, which represents nearly a third of the United States population. What's more is that its monthly unique visitors have far exceeded the traffic coming to, say, the New York Times or the Washington Post websites. Next in line comes the conservative Washington Examiner. They're second to foxnews.com in terms of monthly website traffic, and they've seen considerable growth over the last several months, uh, in fact, ever since Trump was elected. Three times this year, April, May, and June, the Examiner has at least doubled the number of unique visitors from last year. So in June 2019, it jumped to 10 million unique visitors, up from 5 million in 2018. In fact, the examiner, like foxnews.com, has posted traffic gains every month this year. Again, an astonishing achievement. In terms of just social media in general, according to the traffic analy uh, uh, analytics over at Chartbeat, so-called far-right sites have uh, seen increased Facebook referral traffic in 2019 compared to 2018. In terms of talk radio, right-wing hosts such as Rush Limbaugh, Hannity, Mark Levin, Glenn Beck, they continue to dominate the airways. It's not even, it's not even a contest at this point. What all of this means, why this is so important, is because of something scholars call the network society, okay? Our age, the world in which we live, it doesn't simply have a media. In many respects, our world is the media, right? For better or for worse, our world is the media. We live in a mediated world, right? This really came home to me when we lost our internet service for four days. It was like our lives shut down here, uh, if it weren't for my iPhone, at least. Um, you know, I couldn't watch television. 
I couldn't access email. I couldn't Skype. I couldn't even print out uh, something on my computer. In many respects, our lives shut down when the internet shut down. Okay, this is what scholars are calling a network society. All right, where society is now increasingly reorganized around immediate access to digital information and the delivery mechanisms that allow for such, like the internet. And what we're seeing here is that this collapse of left-wing media and the surge in right-wing media is an indicator that our society really is beginning to move away from the left-wing globalist monopoly that used to rule our information access and news media outlets. And we're instead moving more towards a far more conservative, nationalist, populist conception of the world to the extent that the network society is being dominated by right-wing media we will begin to see society as a whole, our world as a whole, move to the right. So I think this is a very significant development. The collapse of left-wing media and the rise of right-wing media is but another indicator that despite all the frustrations and disappointments we see on a day-to-day -day basis in our political comical theaters, nevertheless, slowly but surely, a new conservative age is rising. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out some of our awesome merch that celebrates all things nationalist, populist, and traditionalist down at the links below. You're going to love that. And please click on either our Patreon subscribes to our PayPal links below and consider becoming a monthly supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of super awesome conservative trends so that you can live in the present in light of even better things to come.